just want to introduce Mike Weber. Um, he's a lead trainer um, at spidertools.com and um, he'll be talking about choosing plugins uh, with Nagios. Uh, thank you, everyone. Okay, how many of you guys are using Nagios uh, Core? Wow, that's amazing. Um, many of the new people coming are going to XI. Now, not to say, I think Core is a, a great option if I was going to set up. Um, if you know the command line, you're set. And if you're struggling there, then you got some problems. One of the problems that uh, is very common in when we're doing training is people make choices that they regret. Now, I've talked to a bunch of people already and they say, you know, several people have told me, oh, our configurations are the worst. We've got a disaster happening. We don't know what to do. The problem is, is there's no way to know where you're going to go with your Nagio setup. There's a lot of administrators that I talk to that the management says, hey, let's just do this little bit of uh, monitoring. And it was so successful that it expanded way beyond, but the management forgot to tell them, we're not gonna give you any more money, you gotta crank it out of that little piece of junk that we gave you in the first place. So there's a lot of problems, and so choosing plugins is a really an important aspect. I, I thought about this, uh, this particular session from a comment that I had from one of my students. Uh, he was a, a Nagus administrator in Africa. His company was rolling out uh, wireless internet in Africa. And you can just imagine the infrastructure in Africa is wild. Uh, but his boss said, we need to check everything within uh, one minute. All of our intervals are one minute. We, this is all critical stuff. So his question was, um, can I do 500 checks per second? Now when you think about that, cer certainly you can do that with the right resources hardware-wise. But the issue is bigger than that because he was actually asking the wrong question. And this is why. You have to think about the fact that many Nagios plugins hold the resources, for example, like check ping, three seconds. So when you say we need to do 500 checks per second, really what you're asking is we need to do 1,500 checks per second because we're using a lot of pings. There are plugins out there that hold the resources for 10 seconds. So in those kinds of situations, I mean, when you're evaluating what plugin do you want to use, it's not only talking about security, talking about uh, ease of setup, but it also means, hey, are you going to be able to do this? Do you have the resources to be able to complete the checks? Because if a check takes 10 minutes, or sorry, 10 seconds to complete, this is going to be a significant problem for you. So we're going to look at this and um, look at some, some of these options here. These are the things I want to look at in terms of identifying some of the options. And I want you to uh, interrupt me if you have questions because I want to ask the, you know, answer, help answer your questions as we go along. But public port monitoring, just mo monitoring a port. Is a port up? I mean, this is a pretty simple process. It gives you some information but it's probably not everything you want. NRPE, Nagios Remote Plug Executor. So here, this type of plugin, you place, uh, you're executing your plugins on the remote box. Of course, there's advantages. You're putting all the load on the remote box, not your Nagios server. Uh, and then they execute and then returns the information. You've got SSH. Of course, with SSH, you've got secure connections, secure data transfer. So if you're in a uh, hostile environment, you want to think about using SSH. 
Uh, NS client, if you've got Windows, NS client gives you the option to use uh, check NRPE, check um, NT, and some other options if you wanted to use those. So if you want to look at that. NSCA, Nagia Service Check Acceptor. This is a passive check. Now, when we talk about passive versus active, in an active check, Nagios initiates the connection. Nagios says, okay, it's time to go, go to the remote host, collect the information, and return it. In a passive check, the host initiates the action. So you've got a cron job on that host, or you have a security event on that host, generates the information, and sends it to Nagios. Nagios has no idea when that's going to come. And so there's some problems that develop from that kind of situation. Now, NSCA is the, as Ethan mentioned this morning, is the older passive way of doing things. The newer way is NRDP. And it, it saves on some resources, and it's easier to set up. So there are some advantages there. So if you're thinking about passive checks, if you, for example, if you're do monitoring a, a host that's behind a firewall, maybe the firewall guys won't poke you a hole through the firewall, so you can't, you can't use NRPE. So then, you've got to set a script on that box that will send it through that firewall, and they don't have to modify the firewall. And then good old SNMP. SNMP is a great option, and uh, it does mean that you've got to come up to speed on some basic things, but, it gives you some information you can't get any other way. And so it's a valuable <coughs> tool as well. Okay, so the criteria we want to look at is how easy is it to set up? Now, the one thing I really want to focus on here is this is the worst problem that people can make. Choose a plugin because it's the easiest that usually will come back to bite you. Um, I know that you have situations where the management says, we need to get this going quickly. Have you ever heard that? <laughs> and so as a Nagios administrator who's struggling how to figure this all out, well, if you can run check ping, then you can say to them, hey, look, it's working. I understand that. But in the end, some of those choices that you make because they're easy can oftentimes come back and bite you. Uh, because of the resources, you don't get the information you really need, those kinds of things. Uh, network topology. Your network may be a kind of situation that requires a specific kind of plugin. You're not going to use UDP across the WAN link because it's not going to be very reliable. So you're going to make choices depending upon your network topology. Security. Uh, security becomes, I mean, I saw the paper today, uh, right on the front page, and everything in the world's getting hacked, and that doesn't make you feel so good when you're at a Nagios conference and you're worried about your stuff. Uh, security becomes more and more important, and so there are plugins that will provide you better security and are going to give you the same abilities to do what you want. Uh, and then the important thing I, I want to make sure that we focus on is resource usage. There's some things I want to tell you about resource usage of plugins so you don't make an easy mistake that you could avoid. Uh, avoiding some of these plugins uh, or at least thinking about some of these plugins that could really uh, take away your resources. Here's the four principles I want to teach you about plugins. If, if these, the, these four are the only four things you get out of this session, then memorize these things because they're going to they're gonna help you as an administrator. Number one, poor choices in implementing plugins cannot be compensated by purchasing bigger and bigger and bigger hardware. You're going to run out of money. You can make some poor choices that you're not going to be able to buy your way out of. And so making good choices about the types of plugins you implement initially can save
Bekommen.